All right, let's look at, so I told you that the difference between TCP and UTP or between IP and transfer protocol is because I got multiple applications running on my Ethernet port at the same time, I have to have separate port numbers. I've got to have a separate port that gets attached to the IP address, which creates a socket that I can make sure that communication happens between the application sender and receiver and not get uh, messed up. So the last thing I want to do is be texting somebody and all of a sudden what I'm texting gets posted on Facebook. Not sure that would be a good thing based on who I'm talking to. So, so basically both TCP and UTP use port numbers to manage simultaneous conversations. Uh, there are 16-bit numbers and what happens and there are different categories of these, and we'll get down to that in a little bit later. Now, I mentioned earlier that the combination between the port and the IP address ends up being the combination that is known. So the IP address and the port number ends up being what's designated as the socket. So you'll see a socket pair, which would be source IP, source port, destination IP, destination port. Uh, those would be socket pairs that allow you to communicate. So you see uh, just a brief example where you've got a source port of FTP, but I've got a destination port of 21. Uh, so And these port numbers, uh, some are assigned you know, to a particular application, and some are random. And we'll, like I said, we'll get into that a little bit later. So just know that those two combinations. Now, port number groups. Here are the breakdowns of the different port numbers. All well-known port numbers are between 0 and 1023. And these are all ports that are uh, common application, common services, uh, whether it's web browsers, email clients, remote host clients. Um, and those are ones that you'll easily be able to recognize once you see enough. The second group between 1024 and 41, 49151, those ports are assigned to a requesting entity. So somebody will develop an application and request these. So you got some that are well known. They're, they're applications that the industry has decided these numbers are always going to say. Um, when you think about, uh, I'll, I'll go on to that a little bit later. When we go to, so the registry report numbers, you've got to make a request and get assigned by INA, IANA that to ask for a specific number or get a number there. And then they give you an example, Cisco's registered port is 1812 for its rate of server authentication process. And then there's a group from 49,152 to 65,535, and those are uh, dynamic, they're, they're random numbers. You know, once you set up, once you start a comic conversation, it's a sign. So it's a dynamic, dynamically allocated private port. Nobody else knows about it. It's not registered. It's not well known. So just keep in mind, you got three different groups, well known, registered, and dynamic or port numbers. Now, those well known port numbers, remember I told you earlier, you want to make sure you know which protocol is used by which application, what its port numbers, this table. This table is what you're going to want to make sure you keep keep at hand when you're sitting down for the exam that covers you know module 14 and the final exam. Either memorize these or have it work close by so that you don't get confused. Now you see that some of these applications use here you got DNS it uses either TCP or, D, or UDP. Uh, some emails will use either one, uh, but the port number stays the same. 
you see some applications use two different ports, one for control information, one for data, as far as the file transfer protocol, FTP. So this is one you want to double check and make sure you understand what these well-known ports are. Now, there's a command called netstat. Now, netstat can uh, help you understand which protocol, which IP, which port. So here you're seeing what? I'm seeing my random one, because we're looking to see what the number range is. And then you got, here they've got, I've got NetBIOS, HTTP, HTTP. HTTP is what? It's port 80. So anytime I'm on the internet, I've said I've got my random IP or port number, and then I got the TCP. And you see how you see the colon after the after the IP address? That's your socket pair. So you got 192.168.1.124 colon 3166. That is the socket pair to Cisco.com for this conversation. So that netstat command gives you a lot of information about IP addresses and the port number. So let's see. I think I will not get into the TCP conversation right now, or communication process, and we'll do that in the next video.